Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In this video, we will start designing this responsive tabs using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So here we can see we have these three tabs over here and we have the content inside the tab displayed over here. And if I click on the second tab, we have the content of that tab displayed over here. And you can add anything you want over here as the content. You can add images, videos, list or whatever you want. And then we have another tab over here called comments. And then we have the content of the comments displayed over here. And this is also responsive. So if I decrease the width of the screen and if you cross this breakpoint, we can see that all the tabs are displayed in full width. And uh, if you decrease the width even more, we have smaller headings for the content and also the font size of these are decreased. So this is what we're going to design in this video. Now in the first video, we'll just design it using HTML and CSS. And in the next video, I'll show you how to add JavaScript to add the functionality of these tabs. So let's get started. All right here, I have created this folder called responsive tabs and I just opened it with VS code. And I also have this folder called images for this image right here. And let's go ahead and start by creating the necessary files. So let's click on new file and uh, let's create an HTML file. Let's name it index.html. And now let's create a CSS file. Let's name it style.css. And let's also create a JavaScript file. Let's name it main.js. Now let's start with the index.html file. Now in VS Code, you have the shortcut where you can just press exclamation and press tab and you'll have this basic HTML5 code. All right, let's link our CSS over here. So let's tap link and in the SF, I'll just tap style or CSS. And here in the body, I'll just link the JavaScript file. So I'll just tap script. And in the SRC, I'll just tap main.js. All right, let's start with the markup of the tabs. Now the first thing we will do is we'll create a container division to hold everything. So let's give it a class of tabs container. And in that, we will create a division with the class of tab heading container for all these uh, tabs over here. So let's tap tab heading container. And in that, we'll have divisions with the class of tab heading. And in that, we need to have this icon and this text. So for the icon, we're going to use hero icons. Right here, I'm in heroicons.com. And uh, let's go ahead and search for bookmarks. So here, let's tap bookmark. And here we have the icon. So let's click on copy SVG. Let's go back and paste it over here. First of all, let's create a container division. So let's create a division with the class of icon. And in that, I'll just paste the SVG. And after that, we need to type the text. So let's go outside this division. And let's type bookmarks. Right now we need to create another tab heading division. So let's create a division with the class of tab heading. And uh, let's create a division for the icon. Right now let's go back to hero icons and we need to search for this icon right here. Now for that we can just type chart and here we can see this is the icon. So let's click on copy SVG and let's go back and paste it over here. And after this division we need to type the text. So let's type analytics. And let's create one more tab heading. So let's tap tab heading. And let's create an icon division. And uh, the next icon we need to have is this comments icon over here. So let's search for comments. We have this icon right here. So let's click on copy SVG. And let's paste it over here inside the icon division. And after that, we need to have the text, which is comments. All right, that's it with the tab heading container. Now let's create the content of the tabs. So for that, let's go outside this division and let's create a division with the class of tab content container. And in that for each of the content, let's create a division with the class of tab content. And uh, here let's create a heading and I'll just tab bookmarks. And uh, let's create a division with the class of content. And here we'll just add all the content that we want. So I'll just copy this text and let's create a paragraph and I'll just paste it over here. Now we want the first tab content to be displayed at the beginning. So here we'll just add a class of active. So when we have the active class, we will display the content. And here also for the tab heading, for the first one, let's add a class of active. 
right let's scroll down and uh, let's create one more tab content so i'll just copy this and uh, let's paste it two more times and for the second one let's type analytics and for the content we can add an image as well so let's create an img tag and in the src i'll just type images forward slash and we have this image called analytics.jpg and let's also copy this paragraph and paste it down here and let's scroll down and uh, here let's type comments and uh, let's copy this and paste it down Right, that's basically it with the HTML of our tabs. Now let's go to our CSS and let's start styling this. Before that, let's open this in our browser and let's see how it looks. So I have this extension called Live Server installed in VS Code. So once you have this extension installed, you can just right click over here in the HTML and click on Open with Live Server. And here we can see that our design is being displayed over here. Now before doing anything else, let's go ahead and decrease the height of these images. So let's go back and let's go to style.css file and uh, let's target the image so the image is inside this uh, tabs container division and in that we have this tab heading and in that we have the icon division and in the icon division we have the svg so let's target that let's tap tabs container tab heading icon svg and let's set the height to let's try 30 pixels and i think that looks all right right now let's start styling everything else so First of all, let's bring everything to the center. So I'll just target the body and let's set the display to grid and place items to center. And let's set the height to 100 viewport height and we'll also set the margin to zero. And now let's go ahead and style the tabs container. So here we can see we have this main container division called tabs container. So let's type tabs container and let's set the width to 800 pixels and let's set the height to 400 pixels and now we can see that it is in the center let's also set a font family of roboto and sans serif and we'll also add a padding of 16 pixels and let's set the background color to white and we'll also set the color of the text to 14213d and uh, let's also add a box shadow so let's tap box shadow and let's set the values to 0 5 pixels, 50 pixels, negative 8 pixels, RGBA, 0, 0, 0, and 0 0.3. Let's also have rounded corners. So here let's type border radius and let's set it to 10 pixels. Now for all these elements, let's set the box sizing to border box so that we have the correct height and width for all the elements. So here let's tap tabs container and also tabs container asterisk to select everything. And here I'll just tap box sizing and set it to border box. Right now let's style the tab heading container. So we have this division with the class of tab heading container and in that we have all the tab headings. So here let's tap tabs container, tab heading container. Now we want all these elements to be one next to the other. So let's set the display to flex and we'll set a background color of E63946. And now we can see we have all these elements one next to the other. Now here we can see we have added some padding for the tabs container. So that's why we cannot move this tab heading container to the edge of this uh, tabs container division. So for that we need to add some negative margin. So let's type margin. And uh, if you scroll up, we can see that for the tabs container, we have set a padding of 16 pixels. So we have to set a margin of negative 16 pixels. And now we can see that we have the correct width. And let's also add border radius for the tab heading container so let's type border radius and let's set it to 10 pixels right now let's style these tab headings so here we can see inside the tab heading container we have this tab heading division so let's type tabs container tab heading and for the tab heading let's set a padding of 12 pixels top and bottom and 30 pixels left and right and let's set the cursor to pointer and let's set the color of the text to white and we also want to bring this icon to the center so let's type display of flex and uh, align items to the center and we also need to set flex direction to column 
Right now, let's set the text transform to uppercase. And let's set the font weight to 800. And we'll also add a little bit of gap between the icon and this text. So here, let's type gap. And let's set it to 4 pixels. Now for the active type heading, we need to have a different background color. So if you go back to the HTML, here we can see for the first type heading, we have set the class of active. So here let's type tabs container tab heading dot active and let's set the background color to 1D3557. Now here we can see that this tab heading doesn't have the border radius. So for that we need to go back to the tab heading container and here we have set the border radius. So here we also have to type overflow and set it to hidden. And now we can see that we have the border radius for the tab heading. Right now let's style the tab content. So here we can see that we have three tab contents, but we need to display just one of these tab contents. So we have the active class over here. So we need to display this tab content. So let's go back to our style.css file and uh, let's type tabs container, tab content. And by default, we will set the display to none. And uh, here let's type tabs container tab content dot active and here we'll set the display to block. Now let's go back and uh, we have all the tab contents displayed over here. So let's go back to our HTML and uh, here we have added the active class to all the tab contents. So let's remove all of these. Let's just keep the active class for the first tab content. And now we can see that the first tab content is displayed over here. Now if I go back and remove this active class from here and if I add it to the second tab content and now if I go back we can see that the second tab content is displayed over here. Now we need to have a set height for this tab content and we also want it to be scrollable. So here we can see if you go to this tab content we can see that we can scroll over here. So let's do that. Let's go back and uh, let's go to the standard CSS file. And here for the tab content, let's type overflow y and set it to scroll. And let's also set the height to 300 pixels. And now here we can see we are able to scroll. Now let's also position this correctly. So here we have a lot of gap at the bottom. And here at the top, we can see that the text is also displayed over here. So we need to move this tab content down a little bit. So let's add a margin top. And let's try 30 pixels and I think we can decrease it a little bit. Let's try 24 pixels and I think that looks all right. Right now let's style the heading, this paragraph and this image. So let's go back and uh, let's type tabs container tab content h2 and uh, let's set the font size to 40 pixels. And uh, we'll remove the margin top. And uh, let's set a margin bottom of 8 pixels. I think we can add a little bit of margin top. So let's try 16 pixels. And uh, that looks all right. Right now, let's increase the line height of this text. So the text is inside the content. So let's type tabs container tab content content and let's set the line height to 2 and uh, that looks all right. Let's also increase the width of the image to 100%. So let's type tabs container tab content content img and let's set the width to 100%. So now we can see everything looks all right. All right, so that's basically it for this video. In the next video, we will see how to make it responsive and also add the functionality using JavaScript. So if you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.